Well, we are joined by broadcaster Siobhan Ahern and Wickham legend Matt Bloomfield. Good morning to both of you. Right, Matt, we're going to start morning. with Manchester United and Eric Ten Hag. It's a big story for your early kickoff debut, Matt. We reported yesterday that the Ajax head coach had held positive talks with the club. Would he be a good fit as the Manchester United manager? Yeah, most certainly. I think if you look at the work he's done at Ajax over the last few years, um, selling some big players and continually having to rebuild um, and assert his ethos and philosophy on the squad, then he certainly could be a good fit. Um, Man United are obviously coming into a, a time where they need to rebuild themselves, got some big players out of contract in the summer. So, um, yeah, there's certainly nothing to suggest there that he wouldn't be a good fit for them. And Shaban, we understand this shortlist uh, of four names United looking at Mauricio Pochettino, Julian Lopetegui, Luis Enrique in the mix as well. Uh, what's your take on it? If you were in charge of appointing the next manager, who would be your choice out of the four? Well, it's actually changing all the time at the moment because about six months ago I was sitting thinking Brendan Rodgers would be the man for the job. Now I'm like, uh-uh, no chance, not happening. Maurizio Pochettino, I think, was the was the better option. I think what's happened uh, more recently with PSG in the Champions League is kind of ruling that out at the moment. I like the sound of Eric Ten Hag. I like what he's doing. He's clearly, you know, good at winning leagues. He's that kind of guy. He seems like a well-respected man. And at this point in time, I want to trust the background checks, the extensive background checks that we're hearing about and the dossiers that have been compiled. And Eric Ten Hag looking like the man who's coming out on top. I want to trust that. But I do wonder whether Pochettino does have a better CV. Well, t tell you what, it's quite interesting because Gary Neville yesterday, he did a poll on Twitter, which we'll show you actually. And asked all his followers who they would want. Between the two, they, they, he just went for the two between Ten Hag and Pochettino. And 82% actually went for Ten Hag. I've got to admit, Matt, that, that surprised me a little bit. What about you? It surprised me too. Um, the only thing I might say is because of the, uh, the platform that it's conducted on, if Ten Hag's getting a little bit of um, uh, exposure at the moment, everyone jumps on the bandwagon a little bit on social media, so everyone might have just gone along with that. For me, Pochettino would be my choice. Um, the work he did at, at Tottenham over several years came so close to winning something with them, getting through to the Champions League final in 2019. As I've alluded to earlier on, United seemed like they need a little bit of a rebuild and, and the family um, focus that he had at Tottenham and, and the culture and, and the philosophy that he had there, I think would be a great fit for, for Manchester United. They need a long-term vision and a strategy. And for me, um, he would be the man who would implement that. I appreciate what you're saying there, Matt, but I do think we have to look more recently at what Pochettino has done at PSG and crashing out of the Champions League with a squad like that, with the star players that he has. You know, arguably there are bigger stars at Manchester United and he's not quite made it work with the PSG team. That's not taken away with what a, a fabulous side they are and what a manager he is and what he's done in the Premier League as well. I don't take that away from him, but I think you have to look at current form and Manchester United fans and players want a challenge again for the Champions League and that's not looking possible. If he's not made it possible this season, then why would you take him on now? I don't get that. Yeah. No, I, I would only suggest that over the last nine years since Sir Alex retired, they've appointed a succession of managers who have, who have won things and have those credentials, but all they've ended up with is a group of players with, with no uh, culture and uh, in no identity. What they need now is to create a real identity as a football club, starting from the top, going right through the squad, uh, and having someone like Pochettino, who has proven he can do that at Spurs in the Premier League, I would suggest, you know, with the resources and the money that Manchester United have got to spend, um, he would only go and achieve more at Manchester United than, than what he did at Spurs, and he would be able to bring those trophies. But, but he didn't. He didn't do that before. You know, you're looking at one of the biggest clubs in the world. I want to see a manager come in who's going to put a rocket up all of their backside, you know, from backroom staff to players, somebody who's going to, you know, put the fear of death into him. I think Conte is just a huge miss. I would still love him to come to Manchester United. Somebody like Zidane, you know, his name was in the framework for quite some time. He's a winner. He's won the Champions League. He's worked with the biggest players in the world. That's somebody who I think, you know, Manchester United fans and players would be inspired by somebody like that coming through the door. I don't get that buzz from Poch. I'm not being disrespectful, but it doesn't give me what I think we need to go in and challenge our titles again. 
Joe, Matt, Matt's about Does that to, not maybe Matt's suggest to you take on Sorry. Shaban and you lose? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, how it, that's how it tends to work on this show, Matt. You, you've come up against a formidable partner on your debut here. <laughs> yeah, you have indeed. Um, and Matt, you did already kind of touch on it, but I just wonder whoever the new manager comes in, whoever it may be, what do you think should be top of their agenda when they do take up that role? For me, it's building an identity. Um, as I've said, I feel like they've got a a fantastic group of players, um, some world superstars, but um, they don't have a set um, culture, identity and a way of playing. If you look at Liverpool and Manchester City and, and, and Chelsea, the managers they've got, they have an identity and a way of playing and, and something they believe in. For me, um, Manchester United need a little bit of a uh, identity reset. It needs to come from the top. They need to have a director of football that really implements that and the, the signings that they make as a club um, all needs to align to the same philosophy. So um, the incoming manager, whoever that may be, um, needs to be given time. He needs some transfer windows on his side. For me, they're still a few years away from challenging at the very top. And maybe that's why someone like Zidane isn't being mentioned, because he's looking at it saying it's a long-term project rather than a short-term go in and win some trophies. And that's why um, from the top at Manchester United, they need to have a long-term vision, long-term plan, and they need to stick to it. I wonder if that's, I wonder, Matt, your thoughts on this, the idea of then Ralph Rangnick going upstairs, you know, being in charge of the sporting director side of things. I think he's, I, I don't think he's been as respected as he should be for his time at Manchester United and what he's done as a sporting director for the likes of uh, Leipzig has been, has been incredible. He's taken them from the lower leagues in Germany, you know, into Champions League football, you know, into winning the league. So I, I do think that Ralph Rangnick moving upstairs and ha bringing in, if it is Ten Hag, you know, but th there's that blueprint. They keep talking about the blueprint. Chelsea, Manchester City know what their blueprint is and Manchester United don't. So Ralph Rangnick moving upstairs, the next manager to come in, it could work together quite nicely. Matt. Yeah, I'm, I'm not suggesting it wouldn't, but uh, that's, that's just uh, him moving upstairs does show that they are starting to think a little bit longer term rather than just yeah. appointing a manager who's proven to win tro trophies elsewhere. Um, mm. But actually, through that process, they've lost a little bit of their own identity. And Matt, this is a question for you because you're currently now a coach. If you look at this current Manchester United squad, and, and Shaban kind of alluded to this earlier on, do you think that they need to completely change that squad or do they just need to be coached better? No, I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm very early in my coaching journey, so to, to suggest that they need to be coached better would be extremely naive. I, I just believe it's an identity. They've got some real world-class players, but I'm, I'm a big believer in partnerships, so uh, I'm not sure the partnerships are quite working. Is Varane and Maguire the right partnership, or do they need to choose a, a, a better partner for one of those? I, I think Fred's a great player with his energy and his pressing, so th does he need a partner to supplement him? Sancho and Rashford, they're, you know, these, these guys are, are real top players, and in, in Cristiano Ronaldo, they've got a striker who's broken all kinds of records, so the whole thing isn't broken, it just needs uh, like I say, a longer-term vision, a long-term plan, and players uh, being signed to fit in with the current um, squad, not just to re rip up the whole thing. And Shaban, Matt mentioned quite a few of the players there. If you were looking at this squad as a new manager coming in, which of those players would you look at and think, actually, it is time to move on, and which ones would you be keen to keep? I hate to say it, but I do have huge doubts over Harry Maguire at the moment. He's just he's not been he's not been up to scratch and it's been for quite some time. You look at the price tag that comes from him as well, I don't think he's ever quite lived up to that. Um and I and I and I feel for him with, with that regard as well. Um I would never get rid of Cristiano Ronaldo. I'm you know, looking at forums and Twitter, everyone's like, get rid of Ronaldo and I'm like, I'm sorry. Who are you? Why, why would you ever do that? Why would you ever get rid of arguably the best player in the world? I just don't think it's working right. And as Matt mentioned there, you know, the, the, there's a, there are many great players in there and it's not a case of being coached better. I think there are elements of that as well. But I think it's come together as a team, going back to basics possibly. I'm never going to be a coach in my life. Matt, you'll know more that, than that side of things than I ever will. But th there are fundamental basics, I think, missing at Manchester United and they need to go back to basics to make it work. Well, Matt, when it comes to Paul Pogba, all right, so we're kind of staying with Manchester United here, he's had some interesting comments over the last few days. He says his last five years at the club have not been satisfying. Now, one, how would you sum up his time at Manchester United? But if you're a teammate in that dressing room, how would you react to that? So, first off, I, th I think it's been full of promise his five years and, and obviously been slightly disappointing. He's produced some 
real top performances, but also some that you're left scratching your head at. Um, if I'm in the dressing room and one of my teammates comes to me and says his last five years have been underwhelming, I would say, well, your your career is your responsibility. You make of it what you want. You know, the level I played at, um, I had to go and make it work. If not, I found myself out out of a job without a club and, and had to do something else. So your career is your responsibility. What you know, If you want to make a success of it over the amount of time you get to play, then, then that's totally up to you. It's your everyday habits, your everyday um, attitude to, to wanting to go and win, wanting to be better. Um, so if one of my teammates came to me and said they've been underwhelmed for five years, I would say, well, that's your responsibility to go and find the answers to make it better. I do think there is a coaching element with Paul Pogba as well that, that he needs to, you know, players are different these days, you know, and when they're playing at that level and they're worth that much money, you know, 89 million all those years ago, it's been such an inconsistent ride with Paul Pogba. And I look at how he was at the start of the season, you know, against Leeds. And I always go back to this because on that day, it was that world-class Paul Pogba that we know exists. He was running amok and, you know, he spoke to the press afterwards and he'd said that his discussion with Ole Gunnar Solskjaer at the time was to be creative you know, have fun, go and play football, attack. And he was given that free reign to go do things. So you wonder, you know, how he was managed at that point in time. I mean, it quickly changed. It didn't last very long. Um, and then when he came into the club as well, you know, all those years ago, you know, he won two trophies, but he's not been winning enough. He's not been consistent enough. But I do think the man management with Paul Pogba maybe is something that needs to be explored as well. Yeah, and we've reported that a number of European clubs, as well as two Premier League clubs, are interested in signing Pogba. Uh, where do you think he would be a good fit? Matt, if you were to pick two Premier League clubs who might go for Pogba, who do you think they'd be? Newcastle would be an obvious choice because of the project they have there and what they want to go and do. Um, and, and the other one, I, I have absolutely no idea who it might be. It depends whether his, his motivation is to prove um, that he can he can do it in the Premier League if he feels like his five years has been underwhelming at Manchester United. If he has an opportunity to go and sign for, for Manchester City, Chelsea or, or Liverpool, as, as horrible as that would be for Manchester United supporters, he might feel like he's still got something to prove and he wants to go and do that. And if you watch his performances for France within a set structure and a, and a position that he's comfortable in, um, you wouldn't bet against him going and playing for one of those other teams and, and proving a huge success. And I know that that would be horrible for Manchester United supporters, but... There's a real big player in there. It just it just depends whether he's able to go and fulfil that potential that he's been promising for so many years. Yeah, I, I absolutely agree with that. I would say it's a huge worry. If he went under Jurgen Klopp or Guardiola, there could be huge issues for Manchester United why they hadn't made that work better for Paul Pogba in the beginning. Uh, so, yeah, I would not like to see uh, Paul Pogba go to any of the top four Clubs, man, you know, when I look at Newcastle, I think, you know, they can afford him. Would I like to see him go there? No, I don't think so. But I think with the interest that he's having, you know, from Real Madrid, from PSG, I don't think it's quite hit the mark in the Premier League. So I would be willing to let him leave the Premier League, but not go to any top four clubs. In either one or two words there, depending on which club you think he'll be at, Shaban. And then, Matt, which club do you think Paul Pogba will be at come August this summer? Matt, you go first. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I disagree. <laughs> yeah, I, th I think he'll, I don't think he, I don't think he will stay in the Premier League. I think he'll go. I don't think he'll go abroad. Um, probably Paris Saint Germain. Ah, oh, Paris Saint Germain. That's three I words. Agree. I forgot that's about them. 